Coming up on Titans All Access, Dave McGinnis is here to break down what makes Kansas City's quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, such a challenge to defend. Jack Rabbit Jenkins is this week's Nissan Insider. Find out the story behind his name. John Robinson stops by with his take on how the Titans performed on Monday night. Plus, Amy Wells goes around the field with Chester Rogers to find out how the child actor made it in the NFL. All of this and so much more coming up on Titans All Access. The monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to another edition of Titans All Access. We're starting this program in the Titans Zoom studio. I'm Mike Keith with General Manager John Robinson, and we're Zooming some talking ball presented by Duncan. Coming off the Monday night win, 34 to 31 over Buffalo. John, I know it's been several days, but I don't know that I've recovered yet. That was a hard stop. Yeah, I mean, talk about an exciting night of, of football for Nashville, for our fans. You know, just thinking back over it, it was really like, I mean, it was really like a heavyweight boxing match. I mean, we traded blows back and forth. You know, Buffalo traveled well. They had fans there. You know, they would make a play and their fans would get loud. We'd make a play, our fans would get loud. But it was just really cool at the end when Derek broke off that long run to take the go-ahead score. Really well-blocked play. Give them the ball back, get it down on the goal line and a fourth down stop in the and Nissan Stadium just goes uh, into complete pandemonium. I don't know that I've been a part of many exciting games like that one, Mike. Okay, so some of your specific takeaways about the ball game, John, what, what did you take away from Monday night's win over the Bills? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a really resilient game for our football team. You know, we knew that they were, they were you know, a top defense in the league. They were a high-octane offense. They've got a lot of great players. But we were going to have to be detailed. We were going to have to execute those details that they were gonna make some plays and we were gonna have to bounce back, you know? And I think that's what we did. We never panicked, even down there on the goal line stand. Like we didn't panic, we executed, you know, a call that we've executed several times and, you know, a couple of individual efforts throughout the course of the night that really stood out as well. Let's talk about A.J. Brown's individual efforts. Seven catches, 91 yards. A.J. got going in the second half. The passing game got going in the second half, John. What really fueled that in your opinion? You know, I think we were able to build some play action stuff off the run game, Mike. Some of those strikes, some of those end cuts that, you know, AJ has caught a lot in his time here. You know, he just did an outstanding job of breaking his route off at the top, creating some separation. The O-line did a good job of giving Ryan a pocket and Ryan stood in there and, and stepped up and ripped it in there. And AJ does what he's always done. You know, he throws his hands up there, he catches the football, he puts his foot in the ground and tries to get extra yards. And, you know, he really came up big force in that second half. Jeffrey Simmons is the guy who's getting a lot of attention following that game for the play at the goal line. Did an interview with Amy Wells after the game, and he said he'd really been pressing. He'd been trying too hard to make things happen. Then he just sort of took a deep breath, let the game come to him, and it really did, particularly in the fourth quarter. What have you seen from Big Jeff? Yeah, I think, you know, in, the, in, that, in that game specifically, he, he got more comfortable with uh, the scheme, with the way that they were trying to attack him and, and block him. You could see that he was playing with a little bit more violence, it seemed, every series because he started to gain some familiarity with the scheme and the blocks and the goal line play down there at the end. It was just a an outstanding individual effort on his part to knife in there and explode through cutoff block and force that sneak to come up short. Let's talk about the fact that Monday Night Football is over. You've had a short week now to get ready for this weekend's game with the Chiefs. With everything that has gone on, injuries and such, how challenging has it been for this football team? Yeah, I mean, we've been there before on, on short weeks, you know, whether it's a Thursday night or, or, or whatever it may be. but. You know, on Tuesday, you come in, you take stock of the game. You know, you go through the injuries, you start to map out the practice plan of how many reps is this player going to get? Does this guy need an extra day of rest? Or, you know, you map that out. You know, we get the, the scouting report from the scouts. The coaches start to implement the, the various pieces of the game plan. You know, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you're back on the grass. Kind of been a normal routine, if you will. It's probably a little slower, Mike, because you have a little less time you know to kind of heal up after a, a tough game like that buffalo game was by the time you get to saturday you're working with some speed you know and you're, you're really trying to fine-tune the details and it's been a good week 
Bottom line is, this is a tough football team, John. you got to be very proud of that. Yeah, it is. And we've got another tough opponent this week. I mean, it's an explosive offense. You know, we know at Kansas City, we've played them. Seems like we've played them, you know, last couple years at least as well. So we know what they're capable of, but super proud of our football team and the way we've been able to continue to fight and stay resilient throughout the course of games. John, thank you so much for the time. As always, we enjoy Talking Ball with you presented by Duncan. Thanks, Mike. Tighten up. All right. So I'm going to throw on the sport coat, leave the Titans Zoom suite and head to the Bet MGM studios. When we come back, you'll learn about a Titan who actually has an acting career in his past. This will shock you. Amy Wells has the story when Titans All Access continues. Titans outside linebacker Bud Dupree's real first name is Alvin. Titans corner Jackrabbit Jenkins' real first name is Janoris. But Chester Rogers has a stage name. So he's really got two names. He's Chester Rogers on the football field, but when he was an actor, he was Trey Rogers. Find out about more of that part of his life as we go around the field with Amy Wells. All right, Chester, there are so many things that I could ask you about your career and playing football and being with the Titans, but I'm skipping all of that for okay, right now. Okay. I want to start with the fact that before you were a football player, you were an actor. Right, correct, correct. Okay, tell me about this and how your acting career started, because you're not from California. No. You're from Alabama. Right, I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, I started, I got into my acting career around 19 years old. Uh, my first movie was Constellation with Billy D. Williams and Gabrielle Union. Um, I got casted for the role of the young Billy D. Williams. Um, we shot it in my hometown, actually, uh, Huntsville, Alabama. And after my first movie, like all the producers and directors were like, they told my mom, you gotta get this kid out to LA. So um, I moved out to LA for four years, went to middle school there, landed some big roles and I just kept, you know, kept doing it. I was having fun, I loved it. Towards the end, uh, I kind of told my mom I just wanted to go back and be a kid again and I got back into football and now I'm here. I mean, you've really been in some movies with people that a lot of people would know, right. you know, names that people have heard. Tyler Perry, Gabrielle Union, like you said, I mean, big names. Did you get to interact with these people? Like, Absolutely. how Hollywood were you? It was, honestly, it became so normal that it didn't feel Hollywood, but you know, I'm I'm doing movies with Cuba Gooden Jr., you know, I've met Jamie Foxx, Chris Rock, you know, you name them, like, I was living in the apartment complexes with all these guys, um, one of the guys that was random, but it was Rick James, like, we stayed in the same, you know, apartment complex and I would see him in the grocery store and you know but it's so no it was normal because you know everybody's just regular out there but yeah you know that was the that was the upside of it. So how do you then make the transition from you know what I think I'm done with this I think I'm gonna go play football now. Well really it wasn't that I was gonna be done with it I just wanted to go be with my friends again and we never made it back out to LA because like I said um, I got good at football again and just took it from there so uh, actually I do plan on going back to acting once I'm done with football, so I didn't put it a bit. Is there any crossover from being an actor in Hollywood and having some of those acting skills and being an NFL player? It seems like they're on two separate ends of the spectrum. Yeah, but um, I kind of I kind of challenge it as the same. You know, uh, when it's time for game time, it's like flipping that switch, you know, just like with acting. When, when the director says, action, it's time to go, you flip a switch, you get in the character. So I'm kind of like, it's the same as football, you know? Monday night, I'm gonna flip that switch and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be an actor, you know? Feels good, man. Ain't nothing like Monday Night Football, baby. It's gonna be a show tonight. Just tune in. Being here with the Tennessee Titans, we've seen you kind of grow into a role and be more of a contributor. You're on the field a lot more. What has clicked here with the Titans? It's genuine, you know, uh, the, from all the way up to uh, the GM and down to the training staff, uh, everybody embraces me, I feel wanted, and you know, it's just a great situation. I just feel like I'm in the right place at the right time, and I'm just taking advantage of it. Touchdown, Titans! Chester Rogers! Being a part of this team as it's grown throughout the season, how proud are you to have been a part of that growth? Oh man, it's, it's, it's a blessing, man. I'm, I'm super excited to be a part of it because it's a great group of guys. And we all have a, you know, a common goal, you know, at the end of the season what we're striving for it. So like I said, I'm embracing it and I enjoy it. So you're going to go as long as you can and then one way take it back to Hollywood? Yeah, when I, once I'm done, once I hang the cleats up, I'll probably be back in LA, you know, uh, doing some things. What is your dream role? My dream role? Um, I don't have to sound cliche, but I was talking to some, some of my friends and just my story, my life story, but some of my friends, 
I think it would be a great story, you know, to pitch, you know, uh, everything I've done in life. I would love to, you know, be in my own, my own movie. Well, then who plays you in your movie? Me. You play you? Absolutely, absolutely. Ah. Not as a kid, but you know, as I get older, I would, I would, I would play myself. Uh, I would love to do that. I'd watch that movie. Good stuff with Chester Rogers. When we come back, more good stuff. The Nissan Insider with the aforementioned Jackrabbit, Janoris Jenkins. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Titans All Access in the Bet MGM studio. Now, everybody's got a nickname. Mike Keith's was Bam Bam. We don't need to know why. Mine was Dubs because my last name starts with the letter W. And Jackrabbit Jenkins, well, of course, his nickname is Jackrabbit. But why? We sent old Bam Bam Mike Keith in to find out for us in this week's Nissan Insider. Can't hold it back on my own. Does anybody call you Janoris in your life? Nobody call me Janoris. No one? No. no. No member of your family calls you Juno. No. You're Jackrabbit. Jackrabbit or Rabbit. Jackrabbit or Rabbit. And you asked the Titans to list you on the roster as Jackrabbit yeah. because that's what everybody calls you. Correct. Explain how you became Jackrabbit Jenkins. Well, it started at the University of Florida um, my freshman year. I was out there, you know, making plays on the field, but I didn't know what I was doing. Remind you, I had went early in the spring. So, you know, when you go in the spring, they just throw you out there. But I was making plays. We got a meeting room one day, and the coach was like, um, making a lot of plays. You, you moving really fast. We're going to call you Jackrabbit. And then ever since that day, I just ran with it. But you didn't actually chase rabbits. Of course. You That's, did? That was part of my nature. That okay. was part of my living. That was part of my growing up. How did you not end up on offense being so fast? Because I've always been quick. And um, I, liked, I was, like, real physical in high school. So I always wanted to hit people. But I played running back in high school. But when I got to college, they moved me to corner. Have you been surprised that you could play this long? Not really. I haven't been surprised. I mean, it's a position that guys, you know, once you hit 30, you start right. to, but you've just, it's like you've gotten better. Uh, it's all about taking care of your body, understanding the game, mental reps, and just being a pro. I feel like I've been doing a great job of that since I've been in the lead and I just got to continue. Dave McGinnis works with us on Titans Radio. My he God. loved, he loved, he, he My loves God. Jack Rabbit. My God. He talks about the fact that you've become more of a pro right. as you've gotten older Correct. and that that's what's really allowed you to do it. Where would you say you've become more of a, a pro and who helped you to become a pro? Uh, just studying um, on and off the field. People like Cortland Finnegan, Dominique Roger Clamardi, you know, just being under those guys that's at a young age and learning from those guys and understanding the game helped me become a great pro. I learned how to film study through Cortland. I mean, I just learned, like, at first I came in, you know, I was, I was young, here and there, but then I got settled in and just learned how to become a pro. What's the hardest thing about covering an NFL wide receiver? The hardest thing? Uh, just being consistent. Uh, you gotta be consistent at cornerback. Because at any moment, you don't know if the ball is coming or not. So you always got to be consistent. You know, just learn how to take care of your body. The other thing that I, I've never understood that, that's really hard for people is you're going to fail as a corner in the NFL. They're going to catch passes. It's going to happen. How do you get over it? And how long did it take you to learn to have that put it aside after one play and go on? Well, in the NFL, you got to understand. Everybody get paid. Everybody going to make plays. At the end of the day, if somebody make a play on you, you got to brush it out. Because guess what? It's a whole game. Um, one play don't determine one, the whole game. You just got to continue to work. There's more Titans All Access on the way. On the other side of this break, Mike Keith's Keith. The best part of the show is coming up. Stick around. What's good, Tennessee? It's hard to say we're clocking in because we never stop. Let's go to work. Keep up the work, Tennessee. 
we will too. Tighten up. Tannehill gives Henry on the right side. There he goes. Allen under center. Sneaking. No, I don't he know. Did not make that. I do not know. 25 30, 35 40, That's 50 it. 40, That's 30. It. Let's see where they spot it. He did not make that. The Titans think they have stopped it. 20, 10, 5, end zone. Allen tried to sneak. He got nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, 76 yards. Derrick Henry, touchdown, Titans. Yes. Not yes, not yes, hell yes. Welcome back to the Bet MGM studio with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and we continue with Titans All Access as we go beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. And here's Coach Dave McGinnis. Mike Keith, so happy to be here with you and Amy Wells and beneath the surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Let's go. Let's go. All right, there's a lot to look at, and we want to talk about Patrick Mahomes and sure. how dangerous he is as a runner. He's an absolute. He's an absolute threat with both things that go on with him. And here's what here's what you got to worry about with him. When he escapes, he escapes vertically or horizontally. You've got an issue. So you not only have to be able to cover what he may throw, you also have to be able to get the lanes and cover as you see him here. And what he's going to do, he's going to motion his tight end to go to two by two. You see that the defensive front shift to where the tight end is. Now off of this half play action, you can see the B gap to his left open up immediately. They're in man coverage in the back end. Big problem, huge problem, huge gain. Watch this thing open up. You can see what's going on back here. Les Scott got an umbrella. They dropped into some zone with man pickups. But as soon as the zone people underneath turn their backs, that B gap opens, he's gone. Coach Mack, he's dangerous as a runner, but Patrick Mahomes also dangerous when he gets rid of the football quickly. Yeah, and we also, we, we've seen what he can do with his legs. Now let's take a look at what he does when he recognizes coverage. This is now three by one. They've moved the back over to his left side. Now they got a quads look, a four by one, and immediately he steps up, but as he steps up, they run a layered route. You see how quickly it comes out. He's got that short stop snap throw too. Watch his eyes downfield, quick snap, ball is in there before anybody can react in a zone coverage. This makes him doubly dangerous when he starts to step up. He's identified it, he flicks it, completion. Now you want to talk about being dangerous. It's not just when he's passing the ball, it's those deep balls that you've got to be worried about too. Well, and here's the, here's the issue too, Amy. You've already talked to me about, I mean, you've already heard me talk about their, their identifications. You're going to see in this play, he moves a back out to get identified man zone. He knows now he's got man-to-man -man coverage. He immediately knows where he's going. Watch him drop back. He's got one-on-one -on, -one on the outside to McCole Hardman. McCole Hardman is another speedster in their stable of speedsters, but he's identified it so quickly, and look how quickly the ball came out of his hand. He threw the ball when he was still covered. And quarterbacks that throw the deep ball, if they can see the back of the defender's helmet, the ball's coming out of there. And this is a great example of all three levels that he's dangerous on. So he can run, he can get rid of it quickly, he has a great arm, he's smart, and he can throw the deep ball. Well, all of that is yeah. true. Yeah. Yes. No problem. You didn't lie. You didn't lie with any of that. Titans have their work cut out for them Sunday. Yeah, sure you do. And then the, the thing you have to do, if he does throw it quick, like we saw earlier, and that one, you got a spot tackle. You can't miss tackles against these people. They're going to move the ball. You can't miss tackles and go, do not give them the explosives like you saw them get against Washington football team and McCole Hart. You can hear Dave McGinnis on Titans Radio Sunday at noon Central Time when the Titans take on the Chiefs. When we come back, more of Titans All Access. Stay tuned. Titans Amy and Coach Mac podcast. It's you and I, you know, talking to a lot of people of my acquaintances around the league, very close acquaintances. Because we really do just talk ball all the time. I think it covers the whole entire spectrum, you know, of what the National Football League is, all the way from the technical aspect of it, from officiating to the women in the National Football League. But then we're also going to have a lot of fun, and with Coach Mac, you know, there's never a dull moment. And you ask what it is, it's the greatest thing you'll ever listen to. <laughs> I mean, that's basically. Tune in. That's the Titans Amy and Coach Mac podcast coming soon. Welcome back to Titans All Access. It's time for the best part of the show. Mike Keith Keys, ladies and gentlemen. Mike the keys to beating the Kansas City Chiefs. All right, let's talk about getting a couple of big play touchdowns for the Titans. That's one of the keys to beating the Chiefs is scoring 
via defense. Maybe a defensive back picks off a pass. Or maybe you throw a long touchdown pass. Or maybe Derrick Henry breaks a long run. You can't go drive for drive with the Chiefs. You need an easy touchdown or two on a big play. I like those kind of plays. Give me another key. All right, let's talk about the Titans linebackers. Big game for them. Inside linebackers have to make sure they're doing a good job against the run and keeping Patrick Mahomes from stepping up and taking off. Outside linebackers have to take outstanding angles, rushing the passer, not losing contain, and hopefully knocking number 15 down. Big game for the linebackers. All right, third and final key to beating the Chiefs. Derrick Henry. Just Derrick Henry, period. This is a game where if you can get him 30 to 35 touches and have him control it, it's a great situation for him against the Chiefs defense. It's also a great situation for your defense to control time of possession. This is a Derrick Henry game. Maybe they all are, but this one especially. I like it when Derrick Henry gets involved, and I like it even more when he's a key to the game. A key to the game. Very easily done. Reminding you, we're on the air at noon central time with the game on Sunday, Titans and the Chiefs. Actually, come on the air with this lady and Rhett Bryant for Titans Countdown at 11 a.m. Central. We hope you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time. Why is your nickname Bam Bam?